The battle for the Mediterranean is once again afoot. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another Medieval 12-12 online battle. Today we have another massive engagement between the forces of Sicily and the forces of Nicaea. They are both bringing an ally to this battle, but today their forces shall meet to go ahead and determine who will have control over the Mediterranean. Once again, you can see that both sides are stacked with soldiers, 11,000 men on either side with the forces of Sicily just having around about 120 more men so it is going to be a very very even battle and it's going to come down to the skill of these players so we'll have to see who can take out one another if we take a look at the forces I believe this is Tre Trebison I think is what they're called they're one of the factions around the Byzantines and uh, we can see on their front line they have a bunch of these heavy archers now I believe heavy archers have recently been buffed um, and they're raised range is really crazy i mean look at that range right now is to kind of give them a better chance against crossbows because beforehand people were just spamming crossbows and the uh the pavis were just so strong they could really just kill anything however sicily are bringing some bowmen as well some aragonese bowmen to the field of battle um so yeah that's going to be on their front line behind that we are going to have some of these uh, kind of like byzantine-esque infantry with the kite shields and then behind that, we do have some pikemen as well, which are going to be brought forward. Uh, some of the Rus mercenaries as well. I love seeing mercenaries brought into each of these battles. Uh, it's just kind of a really nice kind of like feel to them. And then we have the elite Byzantine cavalry. Um, and then it's going to kind of be a similar roster as well over on this other side as well. Just with kind of some more heavier infantry. I love the two-handed great sword dudes right there. They're very cool. Uh, and then over, obviously, on the other side of things, we do have Epirus and, uh, and Sicily fighting together. Epirus is going to have a very similar roster to Nicaea and Trebison. I believe they're called Trebison, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm mispronouncing that. And we have the Epirus Guard as well, which is one of their unique units. They throw javelins and very good armor-piercing unit. Uh, and then for Sicily, it's kind of, you know, kind of like an Italian roster. We have these shields, which I believe are being changed because the shields do look kind of weird. They look kind of cardboardy. So I think that these shields are getting an update in the next patch. We have some more of these Aragonese swordsmen, looking pretty tasty indeed. And they have their dismounted men-at-arms back here, kind of their elite hard-hitting power. Um, and then finally, they have their cavalry as well, which is obviously going to be a very, very strong Italian cavalry. It is some of the best in the entire game, so yeah, it's going to be pretty scary. But surprised, no crossbows have been brought this day to the battlefield, which is something you don't get to see too often. So it's definitely interesting that they are trying to spice things up and I guess try other stuff. Also, archers have become a lot better in the latest patch. So right now we're seeing the two forces get closer and closer towards one another. I think there's a few kind of cavalry skirmishes just going out. The cavalry's posturing right now. You have Epirus with their elite horsemen. Um, just kind of trying to scare it off because, you know, we've seen this a lot. If you guys have watched any of these battles before, a lot of the time, you know, some cavalry charges in the back can be extremely devastating. Um, but it's also so risky. So you can see they're matching each other in the center right now as the uh, as uh, Trevison do move their cavalry forward. So do Epirus, and it looks like the forces are just getting closer and closer, closing the distance. And I imagine the Aragonese archers are going to be winning this battle just because they're in loose formation, whereas the heavy archers over on the right-hand side are not, obviously, of Nicaea. So I imagine the loose formation is going to really be paying them dividends, even though it does make your men a little bit less accurate. I I'm sure it'll be worth it. I wonder if they're just trying to close the distance to hit these pikemen back here. Um, obviously being careful not to get too overextended, but right now these are uh, Epirot archers I mean, sorry these uh, Nicaean archers are getting a lot of free shots off and we're also getting some movement of cavalry Around this left flank. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them trying to pounce on the formation But yeah, I imagine these Aragonese archers are probably trying to take out maybe some of these pikemen back here because the pikemen can be a real big issue if they can get in between the defensive spear walls. And I imagine that's what the player is trying to do. He's going to try and hold the front line with some pretty decent spearmen. And then have the pikemen come up through the gaps. Kind of battle of a bastard style. Over on the right hand side of the battlefield. Again just some more missile firing. We do have some guard archers. And these guys do have a shield. So they're going to be able to absorb 
a decent amount of, of the ammunition. They also, because they are sword and shield, they actually look like they can uh, fight in melee pretty decently. And that's always such a valuable thing in 12.12 is having hybrid archers which can do really well in melee and also do really good on foot. And I think one of the best factions for that is the Ayubid Sultan. They have the, uh, I think it's the Gulan Archers. Is that what they're called? They're amazing in both hand-to-hand uh, -hand and also at range. So we've got a pretty big skirmish phase at the beginning of this battle. Just harassing, you know, kind of back and forth. You know, either side doesn't really want to overextend. Because what tends to happen in these battles, if you end up overextending, then you end up finding gaps in your battle line. And you can see that the Trevor Son player is also using a lot of his archer fire to hit these Italian mercenaries, which I imagine have come from the Sicilians. And they're going to be falling back with these halberds. We do have some cavalry moving forward, but almost immediately we have the other cavalry coming in as well. To cover the archer's retreat, which is pretty good. So yeah, right now it's just a really, really heavy skirmish off. So we'll, we'll jump ahead until the forces are a little bit uh, ready to actually fight one another. Are we? Is this cavalry going to come in? This is a really, really good move right now. Because this cavalry has just broken its way through the battle lines. It's a great way to scare off the archers. But they are just going to fall back. So over on the far left flank, we are seeing Sicily moving up very, very far in the battlefield as these guys get closer and closer to actually engaging one another. Again, it's kind of acting more of as like a shield wall more than anything else, but the armies are getting very close to clashing. However, they need to be extremely careful because not only have they pushed up, but look at this huge gap being created on the battlefield. So they could quite easily find themselves being enveloped by, you know, this huge gap that's been created, you know, if they want to, you know, they form up a decent line, they could cut off any reserves coming in here, and it could be a very interesting way of, you know, cutting the head off the snake, as it were, by cutting up the defensive lines, which are so important in these medieval battles. Once again, but I imagine a lot of these missiles are looking to try and soften up the front line as much as they can. Oh, we also had a cavalry charge as well coming out, right there, by the forces of... Nicaea, they charged in, did they, oh, they killed about 20 men here, 25 men is not a bad exchange, how many horses did they lose then? They did lose a large amount of their horses, so it probably wasn't worth it to get caught up like that. Especially with the archers still firing in, I don't know what they're shooting at, nothing of value. Oh, looks a bit, I'll also make this a little bit bigger as well. So you can see both sides are getting closer and closer, we are getting cavalry charges coming in over here though, against the forces of Epirus, and that's a pretty effective charge right there. Yeah, but some of these lines are just a bit too thin. That's a lot of damage. Oh my god, that is so much damage on them spearmen. They did not stand a chance. Almost killing, they killed almost 100 soldiers right there. They must not have been braced or in shield or something, because yeah, that should not happen, and it doesn't happen. So yeah, I think it's because they're not in shield wall, so they were just kind of like unbraced that cavalry charge, and heavy knights just shred through them. Man, that was a really, really nice move there. The cavalry was a little bit delayed. So this is going to be really important when the actual battle lines clash because, you know, these guys right here of Epirus are going to have to do something about this big gap in their battle line. Like, this unit of spears is going to break fairly quickly. So they're going to need to, you know, fill that gap with infantry or something to ensure that Trepasson don't just keep on going through it and envelop the rest of the infantry line. As well as that, they've also lost a large amount of cavalry here as well from all the archer fire. So... Overall, a pretty decent exchange there. These spear lines are within meters of one another. Just, I imagine, hurling abuse at the front lines. But either, no, neither side is willing to, to fully commit there. I genuinely think as well, in these 12-12 battles, if you're using the high tier archers, I always feel like it's better to use your ammunition on something else. Because... What tends to happen, as you can see on this side right here, like, neither of these guys have a lot of ammunition left on their bowmen. So I feel like it's just better to focus down infantry and try and cause some issues that way, you know, rather than try and out just, kill, like, each other kill each other's missiles. Like, let them shoot your missiles and you just kill infantry. Because I feel like if you can make some soft spots in their line, you're going to be in a much, much better situation to break through. Again, the cavalry is just causing a lot of issues back here. Break it. Oh my god, look at all these lines they've broken up. 
yeah, well, I think they want to engage the infantry line, like, now, because there's so many holes that they can exploit. Obviously, there's a lot of reserves. You've got the Epic Guard and also the, uh, the Vanjin Guard as well back here. But still, like, you can, like, break through these gaps fairly convincingly, I, I feel. I think Nicaea, you know, they definitely have this advantage with their swordsmen going up against spears. They, they tend to do really well, and obviously they are a, a pretty major faction, so that their units are going to be very effective. As the Arch of Fire does continue to go overhead, back and forth. It's a constant bombardment of missiles. The sky is littered with fire arrows. And now more infantry is being committed for second battle line, looking to reinforce. But now we are having the pikemen being brought up in the center. And that's going to be very dangerous for the attackers right here. Because these pikes will just shred at distance and cause a lot of damage. I mean, obviously, realistically, this wouldn't work as like a tactic, but you'd kill so many of your own men. However, this isn't Total War Arena, F in the chat for Total War Arena. There is no friendly fire. So these pikemen can quite effectively move in now and uh, cause some pretty good damage, you know? As the arrows continue to fly overhead, back and forth. Uh, I think the flanks have engaged here. Yeah, the flanks have engaged over here. And this is what's really powerful for Epirus, is this flanking force. Because I believe not only do they have halberds, they also have great swords as well and like good shock infantry. And they've also got these heavy archers as well causing a ton of issues in the back line trying to hit away at some of the infantry so i think if if the red team is to win this battle they need to win this flank with their italian mercenaries and their effort guard and just everything else they have at their disposal so it's going to be up to them mercenaries as well as that boat look at this huge gap if either side realizes this they can quickly maneuver into this gap you know this infantry could come around here and just exploit this flank, try and breaking up this unit. Or, you know, obviously the forces right here, the Rus mercenaries, can also come through this gap and envelop a lot of the soldiers. So it's going to be very interesting to see who kind of notices this first and exploits it. Oh, there's also, oh yeah, there's flamethrowers. These are the new units. So do you guys remember back from Medieval 2 where you had the Byzantine units with the, fl the Greek fire units? This is them. This is the brand new unit. I totally forgot about them. So they, these guys are like flamethrowers. The flamethrowers of the Byzantines. Like, these are awesome. So we'll have to keep an eye on these guys and just see them in action because I'm sure they'll get their hands dirty during the battle. Yeah, I totally forgot that they said that they, these guys were in the battle because it's been a little while since. And there's another unit over here as well, uh, right here. Yeah, it's been a little while since they sent him a replay. So we'll have to see what these guys are capable of because I, I am really looking forward to that. So we do have some cavalry pouring through this gap right now. But, I mean, they're just, like, going to be easily supported with infantry. The Rus mercenaries can, can quickly come into this battle. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just going to be following these flamethrowers around the battlefield now because I want to see what they look like, what their animation is like. You can see a better look of their Greek fire machines right there as well. So we will obviously... They can't shoot right now, I don't think. Are they, oh, there you go. There's some of them. Do they just, they, do they just literally shoot out fire? I know, they're just being moved around. They don't really have a good angle. I mean, these guys could perfectly fit in this gap right now and just burn their way through. Oh, that would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, this would be like the perfect, I, mean, I guess, for cavalry. If they pushed up the infantry line there, like hold the infantry, you could quite easily burn these dudes. But for now, the infantry right here for Trevisan are just enveloping them. So I guess more gaps are better. But we are going to be getting cavalry countercharging. The Sicilian nobles are coming in here. Causing some damage. But a lot of the archer fire is moving over. But oh, there we go. Holy crap. That is absolutely insane. They just shoot out like catapults. Oh my god. That is awesome. They just like shoot out catapult fire. Oh, wow. But, yeah, I imagine they're extremely expensive. They need to be very careful with them. But that is just absolutely crazy. Look at that. That is so cool. 
So, I mean, we'll keep on taking a look at them, but let's take a look at the overall battlefield because I, I want to make sure we don't miss anything that's going on. So the battle lines mainly are pretty even. I would say the pikemen are definitely winning the center, and that's why the archers are trying to kill the pikes, but not really succeeding. Over here as well, we have cavalry in the back lines and a lot of Rus mercenaries charging in as well to help fight out. Obviously, that Greek fire, but wow, actually turning it on its head. The Sicilians are breaking through this gap. Oh my god, though, the flamethrowers. Oh, but the Greek fire units have been caught out in the battlefield and they're also being focused down by missiles, obviously. And they've actually been broken. How many kills did they get? Can we see? Only 50. Yeah, we have so much ammunition left. Oh, that's so unfortunate. They got focused down and caught out by the cavalry. They looked insane. I and mean, we still have one unit left remaining over here. So we'll, we'll be sure to keep an eye out on that. But wow. How is this flank going? Because we were saying how important it is that they win it. And it seems like Epirus are not winning it. Oh, they have Greek fire as well. I guess everyone being in the Balkans uh, has, has access to it besides maybe Sicily. Because everyone is, because I think all of all these three factions besides Sicily can form the Byzantines, so. But it looks like Epirus have been pretty badly beaten on this flank. Now we just have Italian mercenary versus Italian mercenary. With bodies piling up in between them. And a pretty sturdy line here. This infantry is just really strong for them type of factions. And now we just have more of the... Uh, the uh, I guess Vanjin Guard are moving in as well. These guys are looking pretty nasty. And yeah, I, I guess the battle is going to come down to who wins in this pocket, right? Because whoever wins in this big pocket right here can then exploit the rest of the gap. I mean, also, look at that battle line. Oh, sorry. It just hit my, uh, hit my mic. Hopefully that didn't deafen you. Um, but yeah, look, look at that battle line as well. It's pretty crazy. Like, there's pretty bulky lines going on. It's not just these big, thin ones, but... Yeah, we're seeing huge breaks here by Epirus, and with the cavalry breaking through as well, you can see they're immediately going into Hammer and Anvil into the rear. Running through these heavy knights of Sicily, and then also onto the missiles as well. But these Aragonese archers are fairly armoured, and they, they are equipped with some decent weaponry as well, so... They'll be able to repel some of these cavalry, or at least until reinforcements do arrive, which is all good. We do have the uh, the Anjou bodyguard of Sicily, the general's bodyguard, moving around with his lancers. They actually look quite French. Cavalry charging. It's surprising that we're getting a little bit of lag towards the end of this battle as well, considering there's a lot less men than there were before. I guess there's just a lot more animations going on. Yeah, so if we take a look at the numbers, the numbers are extremely even, but they are going down so quickly. Oh, wow, are these Greek firemen? Oh, they're engaged in combat. No. That's not good. That's not good at all. And I love the way that their like, entire body is covered because obviously, you know, the extreme heat. And the Greek fire over there has been taken out. So we got a glimpse of the uh, Greek fire for sure. We're also getting the cavalry coming around, harassing the missiles or breaking out. Epirus, the Epirus uh, bodyguard, the Emperor's bodyguard, which is so good because it basically is the Byzantine general. Oh, the Greek fire still shooting out though. Wow, they're covered in head to toe in blood. So awesome. So cool. But as you can see, Trevor Sonnen just literally moving their infantry through these gaps now and enveloping. We are seeing the front line, but actually starting to break. Sicily are doing a really good job at, at cutting through the front line. I, I'm so surprised with the support of the Pikes. I thought it just they wouldn't stand a chance, but they really are doing a decent job right now of holding this front line and, and breaking through, even against the Pikemen. I guess this just goes to show the prominence of the Italian infantry. I guess it doesn't help that these pikemen are facing the wrong way as well. 
Yeah, I guess it's going to come down as well to who wins these flanks first, because the flanks normally allow, like, allow you just to come in, and obviously you have spearmen going up against dismounted men at arms. So it's going to be a close one for sure. And the Greek fight is still alive as well. Look at that. Oh my god. We have to we have to pause. Oh my god, just look at that. Just look at that Greek fire, man. Oh baby. Yep, that has to be the screenshot right there. Something like that. Greek fire. That is insane. That is so cool that they've managed to make that. And it makes me like so hopeful just to the other stuff they can do during this campaign and, and when that comes out like the scripts are already amazing for 12.12 and they're not stopping. Um, if you don't know, in one of the most recent private testing patches, I'm sure I'm allowed to say this as well, the script uh, uh, D Trooper has made it so you can actually annex vassals. How cool is that in a total war game that you can annex your vassals for a, for a large cost of money? So you can save up and, you know, do that, which is just really awesome. He, he honestly is, like, killing it with the scripts right now in 12.12 and... It's just going to make the game literally amazing. Like, it is going to be one of, if not the best Total War mods out there for what it is, you know, for, like, it being on a tiller. The stuff that he's created, it feels like it's on Medieval too. <laughs> and the whole team is just, you know, doing such a great job. The uh, campaign is shaping up to be pretty amazing. And that Greek fire unit is so cool. They must do so much damage. Like in a siege battle, imagine how much damage they would do. It'd actually be insane. So how is the battle looking overall? I don't know. The sides are really messy. It's very hard to tell who's winning these battles because obviously we have a lot of infantry over on this right-hand side that have broken and come back. And it looks like the Italian mercenaries have been victorious. And the, the Emperor's bodyguard is still harassing. I think right now we're actually seeing Trebison trying to get his ass over to Nicaea as they're fighting Sicily. And the balance of power is now starting to shift in favour of Sicily, which is something I wasn't expecting to happen. I thought they would really clean up the right flank, but Epirus and Sicily are honestly doing a great job. And now we have another big cavalry charge coming in here. As they just cause mayhem in the background, hitting archers, infantry alike. And here we go, another rear charge going to go off from this infantry line. This is going to be pretty deadly. You no, know what they got caught by? Well, oh, they got caught by the general's bodyguard unit by the looks of it. They've managed to win this left flank, but I guess reinforcements are about to turn up. But we also have archers moving in here as well, engaging. What are these sides just like not fighting one another? They're like in each other. <laughs> it's like they don't know if it's friend or foe right now. Cavalry continuing to rear charge into the back of his infantry as well. Man, I hope we haven't desynced. There's a lot of units not moving, and that doesn't tend to be the case. I really hope we haven't desynced in this battle, because I'm literally not using any other mods. I don't think the mods mod has been updated. I mean, it's fine if we have, because the battle's played out really well, nonetheless, but there's like quite a few units just not moving, and when that's the case, it tends to be the fact that, you know, the battle has desynced. But hopefully it hasn't. We've still only got three minutes left, and I feel like the battle's played out pretty well in these, uh, you know, in the, the other 27 minutes of the engagement. And we got to see the Greek fire in action, so. So goddamn cool. But the balance of power is definitely telling us that Sicily and Epirus are going to claim this one with a large last ditch effort just to surround the forces of the Byzantines. And this is going to really, you know, put a lot of pressure on them. Epirus is going to gain a lot more influence with the support of their Sicilian allies. Oh, one of the generals dying, that's going to be huge. Yeah, the, the general from Sicily has actually been killed, I think. Oh no, sorry, that's going to be, that's going to be the other side, isn't it? Yeah, it's just that's where the Sicilian general is. And I think the battle is going to now just shift in favour of them and they're going to quickly clean this one up. We do have, though, some of the Italian mercenaries of Epirus surrounding these guys and 
what is she moving in? I mean, this cavalry could quite easily, the Emperor Bodyguard could just come in here and finish these guys up. Even though they are, you know, decent archers as well. You know, look at these guys. The guard archers are, are really good hybrids. So they can hold their own in melee. But I think what we're seeing is just the rest of this infantry just quickly falling back in the pockets of resistance being shot down bit by bit. So towards the end of the battle, we only have a handful of archers still left remaining. And I, I imagine that they will break very, very quickly as a replay does come to an end but what a great fight that was and it was awesome to see the new greek fire units in the campaign itself and yeah sicily and epirus are going to claim that one i think we did receive a desync there towards the end which is weird but maybe 12 12 is just updated because as i said it's been like a week since I, I i got this replay so maybe that was my bad but i feel like the battle played out perfectly fine so yes hopefully you guys enjoy this battle if you did be sure to drop a like and a comment hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and i'll see you guys in the next one